meant everything. To American Jews, this is kind of like a home movie. It's the story of uh, urban Jews and the, uh, uh, the, the decay, of the crime that came to the neighborhoods. Um, but you didn't go that hard in, in, in showing uh, how bad neighborhoods, Brownsville, East New York, Bed-Stuy went. This was really the beginning of when it was happening. Um, because actually, Brighton Beach is a very gentrified neighborhood now. Yeah. You know, and this is borders Coney Island. Coney Island was iffy then. Right. Then, sure. yeah. And so what I did was I took the danger from that and I moved it over to here because it was only logical when everyone believes that Jews have money and old people are easy prey. So who else do you pick on if you're a, a, not a well-educated gang leader? You know. So. Um, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of things that went on in this movie. Like originally, the lead for the gang was going to be Lawrence Fishburne, but if you ever saw Lawrence Fishburne, he's like six four. There's no way I could have him fight Lee Strasberg. So I had to pass on a great actor and go with this kid, who was fine, but I would have preferred more uh, younger, smaller. But I didn't, couldn't find him, and because you're up against the budget. You know, and as I said, it took seven years, so, for me to put this together. Who do you think this movie? Uh, who would enjoy seeing this movie Somebody today in, in 2014? Night. Somebody home on a Saturday night on cable. I, I I can't imagine this playing a theater. I I can't imagine saying to my wife, "Let's go to the Bijou and see Boardwalk." You know. Oh, maybe maybe in Fort Lauderdale. Maybe in Fort Lauderdale, but maybe I'm too young yet. I don't know. <laughs> But I, I think it's, it's a movie that uh, has some heart and some soul and some passion. And I hope um, it touches some people. And what I hope is, is that it will be seen. I think cable is probably the answer, or DVD. I just can't imagine going out to the theaters and paying what it costs today and to see a film. You don't come out dancing, you uh -huh. know? Uh, do you see this uh, as a movie that would ap uh, appeal to uh, non-Jews as well as Jews? Uh, I hope so. I sure hope so, yeah. yeah. What kind of reaction did you get from Gentiles who saw the movie? I never had anybody say anything. You know? I, had, I shouldn't say that. Years ago, someone called it a racist movie. And I said, the gang's not real. Why is it racist? I said, if a old black, if a, if a old white Jew kills a bl young black man, you're calling that racism. But if a young black man kills an old white Jew, that's okay. Well, you read about that every day. So I said, well, what, what are you talking about? I mean, why is that racism? That to me is not racism. It's good and evil. It's, you know. So that was the one time I had a, a confrontation with someone about it. Told me like 30 some odd years ago. Yeah, that's what happens when you run it in a theater on the east side of Manhattan. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you ran at the Avalon Theater. The Avalon would have been a little different. I, I would have had, uh, I would have had backup. <laughs> I would have, had, I would have had Lonsman help me. Yeah. Congratulations on the well, revival you. of it. it. Was great thank to see you. it. Thank you, thank you. And uh, it's been a long time, but uh, I'm uh, very appreciative that it's finally out there. You know. So. Good, good. And if people like the Lords of Flatbush, they'll like this. Uh, it's completely different because yeah. the Lords is fun. This is more serious. Um, Lords, I could see in a the theater again. In fact, I'm talking now because it's the 40th anniversary. So I'm trying to get Stallone and see if we could do a little something. But uh, you can never, you never know. Very underrated picture. Lords, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. a hit in Brooklyn College. Yeah, it, was, it did well, knock wood. <laughs> didn't you film part of it on the field at Brooklyn College, as I recall? Or was it the, uh, there was some No, some, I didn't do anything at Brooklyn field? College. Uh, football field? Where did I do it? I know what you mean, the football field. Was it Murrow or Madison? Or? It was Madison High School is where I went. But, um... What about Perry King? What became of him? He's here. He's not working anymore. Um, How about Henry Winkler? What became of him? Henry, <laughs> always working. Henry, he's a good guy. Yeah, they're all great. Did you, honestly, about that picture? Yeah. 
did their career, were they so great that they were going to be stars anyway and you just Sly. managed to grab them? Sly and Richard Gere, I knew right away. But I had to let Richard go. You know, he's not in the movie. Perry replaced him. What happened? Well, um... Do you remember? Yeah, we went to Coney Island um, and I bought them hot dogs and the three of us were going to rehearse and Sly said to Richard, if you get mustard on me, I'll kill you. And Richard got mustard on him or something, and next thing I know, they were coming to blows, and I'm in between. And looking back, 40 some odd years, you realize that Richard's a Buddhist. Sly is Rambo. So you realize I'm standing between oil and water. And Richard's the sweetest guy in the world, but he's not what I would consider funny. He's not what I would consider um, he's not as creative as Sly. And when you realize that Sly wrote $2 billion worth of movies, there's nobody I know that wrote that amount of movies. No one made that. You know, all the Rockies, all the Rambos, all, they even did Staying Alive, he directed that with John Travolta. I mean, he's a force. He's a true force. What role do you think this picture made in his career and his ability? In Lord, Lords? Uh, Lords. Yeah, yeah, that was the egg that birthed the, uh, the baby. That was it. And uh, I'm his cinematic father, I guess you'd say. You know, uh, yeah. Would he acknowledge that to you? Yes. If, he's, he's, if, you, go, if you go to stevenverona.com and um, go about because it says about, and as my paintings, my photographs, my movies, my videos. Um, but if you go to about and click on testimonials, there's Sly telling you about that, about how I found him, etc., and how he owed it to me. And so it, it, he's very sweet, Sly. He's been great. So, so if there's, a, you see a Lords of Flappish revi a, a reunion, a number two, and a, a sequel? No, we went through that already. I went through it a number of times. Um, in fact, not too long ago, Sid Gannis, former president of the Academy, and I, um, we had a TV series based on Lords. And Sid sold it to Lionsgate. And then there were some issues with other people who wanted to be involved with us, who, because they worked on the original, felt they should be. And Sid and I, we've been friends since we're nine years old. And we said, you know what? This age, we don't need aggravation. I don't want to work with this guy. I don't need this. Forget it. And we dropped it. And Lionsgate was shocked that we walked away from a series. But we had put it together. And the strange thing is that the kid who wrote it for us was a first-time writer, is now the head writer, showrunner of The Killing. I don't know if you ever saw The Killing on cable. It's a great show. Um, so many know, careers were spawned. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I remember that there was a, 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 a jingle that used to play on radio. I, of course, I, I listened to it on CBS FM, and, and, and it was an oldies band. It was a doo-wop band a group that sang a cappella. Do you remember the song they did? Not Jay and the Americans no, or uh, the Tokens. Know, the, the song went, The Lords of Flatbush is oh, a movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a movie, yeah. About yeah, how life yeah, was in yeah, the yeah, 60s. Yeah. Uh, I don't mean to boast, but, I di but you'll dig it the most. The Lords of Flatbush. Yeah. Who, who wrote that I song? I don't remember. Oh. I don't even know. I, I had nothing to do with that song. <laughs> Um, Paul Jabara, did you know Paul Jabara? Well, yeah, he, he, uh, Paul Jabara uh, co-wrote It's Raining Men with Paul Schaefer. Okay, well, Paul also wrote, um, he wrote the song in the candy store, The Four Lords is Sitting and Singing. And what I knew Paul, and I said, Paul was in London, he was doing Jesus Christ Superstar, and he got fired because he was American. They weren't. They wanted to keep it as an English production. Right, right. And Paulie called me from London, and I was in New York. He goes, Steve Van, it's Paulie, my imitation of Paulie. Yeah. Steve Van, they fired me. I need a job. I go, Paulie, it's a movie about a gang and a motorcycle. Uh -huh. There's no gays. No, they all have friends. They all have friends. Put me in it. So he says, wait, I'll do an improv. And he had his friend Maria Smith with him in London. And they did an improv over the phone. It was fabulous. So I said, look, come to New York. We'll talk about it. 
Right. So I ended up putting him in the movie. But it, he wears a police athletic league jacket, which is pal, because that's what he was. He was everybody's pal. Oh, 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 He's not going to wear a leather jacket because okay. it would look silly. So then I had him write a song. He had never written songs. He wrote the song for Lords. And then uh, Joe Brooks came in and did the rest of the music. And that was evil personified. Talk about having problems. Anyway, um, then. Paul went on and wrote Last Dance for Donna Summer. Yeah, and um, then he had a, a, mu a musical with Bette Midler called Rachel Lily Rosenblum. Never was produced, but he had written all the music and Bette was gonna star in it. So it was like everything comes in circles in my life, you know, Paul and Bette, and, you know. Why do you think this boardwalk was so uh, acclaimed in France? I think they're much more respectful of older, older people, elderly, and uh, it, in Cannes it was a huge success, huge. Yes. And we were at a competition, so there was no awards or anything like that, but um, the Herald Tribune called it the raisin in the festival cake, and the New York Times called it one of the ten best movies of the year. So you know, it was all good, and that was all in Cannes. Now, sure, they're probably American writers wrote it. I, I don't know who the, you know, who was writing for the New York Times. It wasn't. A, I don't think it was a Frenchman. You know, let's put it that way. But what can I say? <laughs> Are you looking forward to a tour of South Florida with this picture now? Now that it's coming out, or you want to torture me? <laughs> I don't know if you get an acclaim like you got here tonight. Um, you know, I'm proud of this movie. There's a lot of I would like to redo, as I think I said inside the music especially. Um, some of the beginning, the first half of the movie, before you get into the love story, it's a little choppy for me. There's things that are missing, uh, things that are a little uneven, uh, however you want to look at it, that I feel. Um, you know. Gordon Player did not play Happy Birthday. Yeah. He was there in the party, but he didn't play, didn't happy, play birthday. happy Birthday. He was low budget. Okay. You know? <laughs> I say, look, Lords of Flatbush was about a motorcycle gang. We only had one motorcycle because I didn't have any money. <laughs> so you make do, as they say. You know? but at least, but everyone had a jacket. Yes, everyone had it. Four leather jackets. One's in the Smithsonian. Henry's is in the Smithsonian. Sly's is in. Last I heard, it was in the Hard Rock in Vegas years ago. Uh, I don't know what he's done with that since. So. And do you have any uh, uh, memorabilia hanging around the house? I have uh, two jackets from Lords. Um, one's a, Jap a Japan jacket and one's a Korea jacket. And they're reversibles from the 50s. And that's it. Otherwise, everything is gone. So. When is this on? When I get around to editing it. <laughs> <laughs>